Now, this is Lixmachia clethoroid jane. There are a bunch of different Lixmachias in the garden. But clethoroid jane is my favorite. Well, everybody, for having had to deal with the pandemic, I know everything looks overgrown. But if you really look at things, you can see how absolutely what a beautiful job everybody has done. This is such a good example. Sayonara are so hard to grow, and she's grown so many of them. I mean, this is going to be spectacular. Oh, oh, and she has an Echinops retro growing, which is globe thistle. The reason why I sound so pretentious about using the Latin names is because globe thistle has different names in different states. And this little hidden beauty, this is all Clematis viticella. And look at it growing into the blackberries. The neat thing about this vine is that it can grow in between the rose bush. I learned this from Ann O'Neill up at the Brooklyn Botanic Garden. She used to run the rose garden and she always grew clematis in her rose bushes. This rose bush has had a very hard summer because of the heat and the drought. Oh, now this is Lychnis coronaria. Oh, rose campion. Now, this just doesn't stop blooming. It's had a bad year because it wasn't getting water regularly. But they just bloom and bloom and bloom. They're just the best. Now, look at all the different types of hydrangea we have. This is super fun. Syrica, like think Syria with a C-A at the end, but it's a common milkweed. It's native, it's endemic, but the butterflies love it. It's a huge bully. It's a huge bully. Oh my goodness. They're a huge source in the spring and in the fall for butterflies. This is why we don't cut them down. Now that we grow different types of Asclepus in the garden. In fact, this is our biggest bully. And we're happy to do so. But she also told me stories before I got to granddaddy's house. She told me stories about when she was a little girl. And she talked about the peanuts and the corn and, and the other crops that they would grow. And so I always wanted to do something like that, even when I was really little, like four or five, three, four or five. I never did see my grandfather grow peanuts, actually, believe it or not. But I've always wanted to try. And so I went to a Green Thumb lecture, actually, online. And they, um, a gentleman in Harlem actually grew cotton and peanuts in Harlem. And I'm figuring if, if he can grow them up that far north, then I can grow them in here in southern Brooklyn, so relatively south Brooklyn. So, um, and they gave away seeds. So that's how I got peanut seeds. And here is this little guy. This one right by the white stake or the white tag. And happily, this one is growing quite nicely. This is an apple tree that I started in 2015 from seed. So labeling it like this helps me keep track of stuff. And um, I'm really patient. Mom taught me patience from a very early age and so I'm for the long haul. So it doesn't ma matter to me that I had to wait like five to seven years for something to come to fruition. Hey, look, there's an artichoke, it's ready. Um, I had 
no idea that they will grow this fast. It's small, but um, it's about to open out and you don't want to eat open flowers. You want to eat immature artichoke flowers. So this one's ready and that one might be, but I don't know. And this one looks ready too because it looks like it's trying to stretch out. That's pretty cool. We'll have our first artichoke to share in the Victory Garden sharing food security is an issue that's been going on way before we had a pandemic. So here on a small scale, we're growing Swiss chard. We're growing red okra. It's probably 10 different kinds of heirloom tomatoes and artichokes, even artichokes here in Brooklyn, red and green artichokes. Anything to help people just feed their soul with a little more food and a little more fragrance. effort. People are coming out here on Sundays at 8 o'clock in the morning uh, to devote their time to pick before it gets too hot and then we're bagging it and we're giving it away mostly through word of mouth. Just things to help brighten people's day. We don't expect that we're going to fill anybody's refrigerator but we do and have been giving people bags of produce that they can go home and cook and enjoy. things is my rosemary plant down the end here which has overwintered for quite a few winters now and you know they get big so I thought rather than have it take over my whole bed I would turn it into a topiary it was sprawling all over the place so I took one main stem and staked it it up and um, but it still has some bushy attendant um, branches which I don't know maybe I'll make a second little ball down here but the idea was it wouldn't take over the whole the whole garden and here's hoping that it makes it through this winter <laughs> because it's starting to look pretty good I think <laughs> 